Okay, today we're talking about rain and thunder. All right, so basically, I have a I have several boxes here. Um, one is a black box, which is called Flash Lightning, which is going to do the animation of switching one background from black to gray. Then I have another box, which is a lightning blast. Uh, actually, that's going to be for the sound for the lightning. And then I have the rain that comes down. And there's, there's also sound for that as well. Oh, this is the sound. This is the sound, rain. This is the, um, the sound for the lightning. And I have up here, rain that comes down. Alright, so let me get started here. First I'll talk about the flash lightning. So basically I went to add event, clicked on a create, and then I dragged over a alarm zero from the main from the main two tab and it's set to number of steps room underscore speed at at a asterisk five, then it goes to alarm zero. No need to have the relatives checked, don't need to have that checked. Then I went to then over in the events, I grabbed a alarm zero from the add events because it has to match each other here. Then the same thing I repeated five seconds from the crate to the alarm zero, same information. Then I dragged over a coded sheet from the control tab. And inside there, I have it set to set to background underscore color equals C underscore gray. So this is a code that's going to basically state that after so many seconds, it's going to flash gray on screen. And um, it's a code. You don't need any image for this. It does automatic in GameMaker. So just make sure you put this kind of code in, and I'll put that in the description down below. And then it's after it flashes gray for five seconds, it's going to basically um, go to alarm one. So room underscore speed asterisk, and this is a millisecond point two milliseconds. And it's going to go to alarm one. Alarm one. Remember, it has to match. Alarm one goes to alarm one. Alarm one goes to alarm one for another milli two seconds. Then it's going to have another coded sheet and it's going to flash black. So, so background underscore color equals C underscore black. And see so if you just basically type this in, it'll, it'll pop up on your screen different colors equals C. And there's a whole list of colors. Once you press that C underscore, it gives you a list of different colors you can choose from. And then just make sure you take that code out because it's going to come up with an error if I don't. And that's all you need. And make sure that the black box is not visible. It doesn't need to be visible. Um, Alright, and then... You got the clouds. I have also clouds in the game, like grayish, blackish colored clouds. As when it flashes gray in the background, you'll see the the clouds up top. Let me show you the demo real quick, and then I'll go back to the code. See that? And then it's gonna flash. And at the very top, you can see there's clouds. Okay, so now, go to clouds. So basically, it doesn't need to be visible in the room as well. It's just a circle I created. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Went to the, created a crate and add event and then grabbed a timer it's set to room underscore speed asterisk minus milliseconds at three alarm is zero alarm zero matches alarm is zero same milliseconds coded sheets gonna state that 
effect underscore crate underscore bl below parentheses ef underscore cloud comma random comma room underscore with comma or parentheses I'm sorry comma view underscore y view and brackets zero comma eighty comma and c underscore black so this basically states that there's going to be a cloud hovering above and then this tells you pretty much the position of where it's going to be located at so I have it at 80 you change this to 300 400 whatever and I think that should move it down more you may have to play with the numbers here I also I believe you can change this to minus a number so I'm not sure if minus or minus 100 or plus or not plus but just regular 100 would make it go up or down I think minus might make it bring it down so if it's minus 100 it might bring the clouds down more on the on screen if it's 100 it might bring it up more I haven't really tested that out but you can change the numbers here and also change the color if you wanted to there's also other effects in in uh, game maker you could do uh, but keep in mind that the more effects you put in your game it may slow down your phone processor on your phone or tablet or even computer um, so just bear with that in mind so if you press effect underscore create underscore below parentheses EF then you underscore you get a list of different things you can do clouds eclipse explosion fireworks flare rain ring they do have rain in this this some um, code um, but I'm not going to talk about this effect in this game because I've tried it and it doesn't seem to work that well the rains too small and comes down too sluggish I got a, a better way of doing it but like I said there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here special effects smoke and you can also change the colors too if you wanted to instead of white you can make it black red or whatever you want to do I'll put that in the, in the description down below Alright, so basically that's what's going to happen here. It's going to flash, well, well not flash, I'm sorry, the clouds. So I got, and you have to have clouds and both um, alarms here. So I have clouds at different positions. I have one at 200, I have one at 100, and they're both gray I'm on in the correct state. And then when I go to alarm zero, I just have it black. So if you don't have these alarms in here, What's going to happen is it's only going to it's going to fade in for a couple seconds and then it's going to disappear. So that's why you need to have alarms set up so it keeps switching back and forth from one cloud color to the next. Otherwise, Game Maker is just going to cut it off after so many seconds. And it has some kind of timer within the code where the clouds will be in for a couple seconds and then it just disappears. So you got to make sure you have these alarms set up so they'll bounce back and forth so after three milliseconds it's going to jump to this type of cloud which is going to be black and then it's, after so many milliseconds it's going to jump back to uh, the gray cloud so it needs, it needs to bounce back and forth otherwise it will just disappear so that's why the, the timers are set in for this stuff and the clouds don't have to be invisible the image then I have the thunder, which is just a sound. So I went to create, and then I just went to the sound location. And the main one tab dragged over, and it's basically going to be looping the thunder. I set to true. Doesn't have to be visible. Then we have the rain. The rain I went to add event, went to step. Then I grabbed over, grabbed a code sheet, and basically it's saying it's saying this: random parentheses, close parentheses, var ran rain random equals seal parentheses random parentheses ten parentheses parentheses. So basically, this ten represents how how much of it it's going to come down. If you have this set to hundred, two hundred, whatever, there's less rain that comes down. The lower the number, the more rain comes out for some reason. So I've changed mine to 10. 
we change yours to 200, 300, it's going to be less rain. And then um, if parentheses rain random equals equals one parentheses bracket, then instance create zero zero the object rain. I'm not sure exactly what this one does, um, but I know this one. If you change this number, it gives you more rain or less rain. This may all. This may be. I think how fast it comes down. This one represents. I think the, the fastness. So I just set mine to one, so it comes down real fast. You can't change this to minus one. It'll give you an error. Um, so I believe this talks about the, the how fast it comes down. And this is how much rain is going to come come out of it. And then object rain. And I put a whole bunch of squares here because um, for some reason just one squared it wasn't enough for the rain to come down in gobs. So I, I pretty much put a whole bunch down so a lot of rain in gobs will come out everywhere. So the object rain is basically, a I just drew a line and it animates, it blinks. It's just one strain of just one strain of rain, which is going to be duplicated using the code. And it's just it's the depth at minus three. And then I said to the create, and then I got a code to sheet, and basically it's going to say x equals random parentheses room underscore width, and then v speed this is the fifth so this might also this also controls the, the fastness of how fast it comes down um so this basically i think is talking about how how much coverage is the rain going to come down and you want to do the room width and the speed's going to be 50. so how, that's how fast it'll come down and then you have the step and then in the coded sheet you have x minus equals one this I believe also this talks about the angle how the angle the angle of the rain how it's going to come down so mine's going to be straight down so I just have it set to one if you have it at eight it'll go at an angle but you got to keep in mind if you do the angle thing you have to rotate your image too otherwise it's going to look weird when it comes down it's going to come it's going to go looking it's going to go either left or right and if you have a straight line of a rain particle it's not going to look right so you got to make sure you uh, redraw your rain to go at an angle if you want to change this number here otherwise it's going to look weird and then I have the rain hit hit this top land piece and when that happens it's going to destroy the top land piece so basically I have a hidden layer here so basically this area right here is the top layer underneath this is the rain that blinks in so basically when the rain hits this land top piece it's going to destroy it revealing the blinking water splashes and it's just it, this is animates and it keeps animating so because when we start playing the the game, basically, the rain starts to come down, and when that happens, it's going to destroy this land mask and reveal the the rain animation. So I have two land masks: the back land, which is this part right here, and then I have the the top land, which is going to be de destroyed when the rain hits it, reveal the splashes in the land mask. And the land mask could have it at depth at minus one top land I have minus five and then I have the rain sound created a rain of sound and it's going to set be set to true and I'll put all that in the description down below so you can make your thunder and rain come to, come come to life here and that's it thank you